Among the 2.8 million active limited companies in the United Kingdom, there exists a small but growing cohort of community interest companies, or CICs, as they're more commonly referred to as. Hi folks, my name is Mahmood. I'm an accountant of over 26 years who's been helping businesses of all sizes and complexity make profit, improve their money mindset, save tax, save time, and have the business they aspire to have. Now, in this short video, in this broadcast, I'm going to be talking to you about CICs, what they are, the special characteristics of a CIC, why they may be a good choice for your social enterprise, and how you go about setting one up. Okay, let's crack on with the video. But first of all, a CIC. A CIC was first created back in 2005, and it was there to allow individuals or groups of individuals to come together to deliver a community impact, a community benefit. Now that idea of community can be very narrow, it could be the town in which you live, it could be a defined client group, it could be a defined purpose, it's got to be capable and it can be very broad, it could be across the world, it doesn't have to be just in a local defined territory. Now that's important to know by the way because when you do set up a CIC, which I'm going to talk about towards the end of this broadcast, having that idea of community, the benefit, the group that you're trying to help, has to be articulated and put in those incorporation documents. Now secondly, a CIC fundamentally is a company. So when you decide the business that you want to run, typically it runs between being a sole proprietor or running a company. Partnerships can also be in there. So a CIC is fundamentally a company, but the advantage of a CIC is that it can be one of two types. It can be a company limited by guarantee, or if you wish to attract investors, if you wish to attract people who may have commercial flair and to give them a commercial return, then you can have a CIC that's also limited by shares, so it's possible to give those investors a dividend. There are obviously limitations, there are restrictions, but let's stick to the principle and the framework, you can have a CIC limited by shares. Also within that, that's characteristic of a CIC, is this peculiar thing called an asset lock. Now the beauty behind a CIC is that when you create one, set one up, a funder, somebody who wishes to invest time and energy in you, wishes to make sure that the profits that you generate are there for the good of your community organisation, are there to benefit the community that you're looking to serve, and they're not for the benefit of private shareholders. So you have what's called an asset lock. So any assets that are built up, any profits that are retained in that CIC, mustn't be distributed to the original founders. And if your CIC no longer continues, then within the initial documentation, you have to choose and select an organisation that is going to benefit from those assets, typically one that has the same outlook and purpose as you. Now, other characteristics of a CIC and why people may choose them is because it's a hybrid. So if you have charitable objectives, charitable aims, the time scale for, for creating a charity can be several months in the making. A CIC is much quicker to create. It doesn't have charitable objectives. It has a wider core objective. It is typically not for profit, even though it can be profit making, but it's much quicker to create. The other advantage of a CIC over a charity is that the initial founder, the driving force behind the organization is possible to be in charge of the strategy, the strategic overview, but also be involved in the day-to-day -day running of that CIC and be financially rewarded for that. If we compare that to a charity organisation, you create a charity, it's difficult to retain strategic overview, strategic direction, and also to be remunerated for running the organisation there as well. And typically, you have to make a choice between one thing or another. In a CIC, that is not the case. CIC is a very popular models these days, for those organisations and individuals that wish to run social enterprises. So that's doing good, helping a community, helping a group of individuals, whether that's local, national or international, but actually still have that business acumen. And as a heads up, by the way, folks, a social enterprise is typically, not because you want to do good things, but at least half your income comes from trading activities. The rest may come from grants, donations, 
but you have to have at least half your income coming from trading purposes. Now, other things that you need to bear in mind. If you decide that you want to set up a CIC, you've got two things you've got to do. One, there's the initial documentation. So it's initially very similar to the same formality as a limited company, but there are extra bits that you've got to do. You've got to define who your client groups are, your community. You've got to define what it is you're going to be doing, the purpose behind that, and the activities that you need to do, or you're going to be doing, to deliver those impacts there as well. And that goes on your formation documentation. In addition, you have the same compliance regulation as you do for normal companies, but also once a year, you have to complete what's called a CIC 34 report, which is effectively a review of what you've done over the last year, consultations with stakeholders and the like. The alternative is to contact us. We can help you form your CIC and advise you on the best way to structure it to go forward. If you decide, by the way, that you wish to have a charity at some point in the future, it's quite possible to create a CIC, to run that, develop that, and convert that to a charitable organisation at some point in the future. If you're a charity out there and you're thinking about having a trading aspect to your organisation, a CIC could be a perfect model. So to summarise, folks, a CIC is growing. It's growing in popularity. It has that social stamp. It has that protection. It has that ability to do entrepreneurial things. It has the same framework as a company in terms of the liabilities. You've got the flexibility of being able to inject private commercial funding in there and also give a return to those investors if you so desire. Hope you got some value out of this video, folks. Obviously, I'd love it if you gave us some feedback, or even better, subscribe to the channel and keep in touch. Until next week, folks, take care.